Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today is a post a long time in coming. It's part two to creating a dynamic chart that with a scroll bar that as you click on it, it changes the values in your charts. Uh, to a specific date range or some other type of range. Uh, so I posted part one a long time ago, got a little tangled up in how to display chart two, uh, part two, and uh, today we're gonna show you how to create this dynamic chart. So first thing, with this chart, uh, we have a dynamic title, and we have data that's flowing in here. So if we look at our data over here, we'll see that uh, uh, March 3rd has three different data points, but March 4th only has one, March 5th has three, March 7th has two. So the chart formulas that we create are going to have to take all of this into account um, so that as you click through the scrolling values, uh, the correct data is showing up. So uh, let's get to it. So uh, if you haven't seen part one on how to add a scroll bar into your chart, uh, go check that out. There's a link in the show notes. Now, uh, what we first want to do to create our chart is we need to find out where is the minimum date. The reason we need a minimum date is we're going to increment that by what our scroll value is to find out what the selected date is. We're also going to put that as our chart title. Um, then we need to find out where that selected date row is to start for our offset formula. And then since uh, some of the days only have one value and some of them have two and some of them have three, we need to find out how many rows we need to show in our offset formula. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So for our minimum date value, just simply equals minimum. And I hit my tab and I'm gonna highlight, uh, let's just do all of column B, hit F4. And uh, that's as much as we need to do with that. So let's go ahead and you can see, minimum date is March 1st. Now our scroll value, that is gonna be linked to our scroll bar. So if I right click on my scroll bar and I click format control, if I bring this over into the window, the current value is one. We're gonna leave the minimum value at one. We're gonna set the maximum to eight since we have seven days worth of values in here. I'm gonna leave that uh, there. If we add more days to our charts later, all I need to do is come in and change this maximum value to nine and that will then be visible since the offset formula will continue to move as far as it needs. We're gonna increment by one every time and we're gonna put a cell link and that's what we're gonna do here. So on this cell link, just go ahead and cl click in the cell link area and click on the scroll value for our cell link and click on okay. So you can see now that as I click away from the control, as I increment it, it keeps incrementing that scroll value by one every time. All right, the selected date or chart title. Um, this is gonna be equal to our minimum date that we found plus our scroll value. Now, uh, unfortunately, if we go all the way down to one, you can see since we're just adding it together, um, our selected date is actually the minimum date on our first value. So you can either set your control form to zero to start with, or we can just simply subtract one. And now we have our selected date and chart title is equal to the same. And you can see as we increment along, it keeps continuing to add one more to our selected date. Uh, now you can combine all of these formulas into one, um, just kind of doing this as a demonstration so you can see the different dates um, and values and how to make it. Now our date row, so what we wanna do is we wanna find out for our offset formula where in this range is this date. So we're just simply gonna do a match formula for that. Hit tab, we're gonna look up this value right there, hit F4 in a lookup array of column B and hit F4 again, and we want it to be an exact match. So I'm gonna type in zero and end my parentheses, and you can see our date row for uh, three, six is the 14th row down here, and lo and behold, it is the 14th row. Now, we need to also determine how many rows, um, so on March 4th, it's only one row, March 6th, it's three. We need to do a count if formula to tell our offset formula how many rows to add to the chart. So we're gonna do equals count if, hit my tab. We're gonna do, once again, our range. Um, in this case, I can highlight the whole column of B, hit my F4 to lock it in. And the criteria is gonna be equal to G5, which is up in here, because um, that's our selected date. 
I'm going to hit the F4 button again to lock it in and end my parentheses. So you can see uh, this is going to continue to change for March 4th. There's only one value for March 3rd. There's three values and that's correct. March 2nd is only two values. So now we have all of our base formulas created, but we need to now create our formulas that we're going to use for our chart data series. And we're going to do that with some offset formulas. And we need to set those offset formulas into our name manager. So go up to your formulas ribbon, go into your name manager or click on define name either way. And we're going to do equals and we're going to call this one uh, chart two uh, series two because I've already got one of these values sitting in there. Um, and we're going to type in our offset formula. I'll put a show note in there for a video that shows you how to really use the offset formula and understand it but I'm just going to go ahead and type in that formula right now. So equals, we're going to do offset, and um, the offset is going to start up here in A1. I'm going to do comma, and we are going to adjust it by um, going down how many rows, and we're going to say we want to go down five rows, and I need to subtract one because it's actually only going to be four rows in this instance because um, March 2nd is one, two, three, four, five. Um, but since I'm starting in one, I only need to adjust down four. And I don't need to, uh, um, uh, since I'm starting over here in A1, I need to adjust over two columns. So that's my next value. Um, and then finally, how many rows do I want to pick up? Well, that's why we have this row count in here. And the last but not least, how many columns do we want to return? And we just want to return one column. So you can click on OK and create that formula. If we go up into our name manager, we see chart two, series two is now created. Oops, I probably should rename that. Let's edit that to chart two, series one, just so I keep my naming convention straight. Now let's go ahead and create the next formula. So we're going to do another new one. We're going to do chart two, series two, and we're going to do that same offset function. Um, but it, so you can copy and paste it from before is fine um, and uh, you can just change the one value that we need to change but we're going to start up in column one row one we are going to adjust it uh, by the number of rows that we have minus one um, and then in this instance we're going to go over from here one two three columns instead of two columns that's the one change in the formula that we have uh, and we are going to go and return two rows and we're going to return one columns worth of data and we can click on OK. The last thing we need to do is we need to create the chart series names or, or the legend, the horizontal access ones. So we're going to do another new one. We'll do a chart two name two uh, our names and uh, uh, let's go ahead and click in here and do another offset formula and in this instance once again we're going to start up here in A1 and we are going to go down like we did before of how many rows minus one we are going to not adjust any columns because we're coming up with our legend or series entry names and so we're not going to have to adjust any columns we're already starting in the correct column and we want to uh, return however many rows our count if formula is and only one column click on OK now we're all set now that we can go ahead and create our chart what I recommend doing is go ahead and creating your maximum value of um, data that you might have. And in this instance, let's go ahead and do uh, a normal chart for March 1st that we would want, including both series that we have in here. And let's go up to our insert ribbon. We're going to do a column chart. We're going to do a 2D column chart. Let me move that up here to the right a little bit. Um, and now we've got our chart created. Uh, we need to insert a chart title first, layout chart title above the chart and I'm going to say that this is equal to my selected date or chart title and hit enter that way as we change the scroll the chart title will match the correct date that we're on next select your chart go up to your design ribbon go over to the select data button and in the selected data button what we want to do is we want to edit these two series that we created so that's what you see up here C and D so we're going to first edit our first series and do an edit. Um, I'm going to leave the series name alone because it is correct. And then I'm going to click in my series values and just hit my backspace key until I get to the exclamation point. I'm going to hit my F3 key and uh, I'm going to do chart two series one and click on OK. Click on OK again and it's modified it. Let's edit the second series. 
and I'll leave the name alone. I'm going to click in the values and backspace until I get to the exclamation point. Hit F3 to bring up our named ranges and do chart 2 series 2. Click on OK. And then finally, I need to modify or edit the horizontal category access labels. And uh, I can just backspace in here until I get to the exclamation point. Hit F3. And this is going to be chart 2 names. And click on OK. Now you can see if I back out all the way down in here, March 5th, if we come over to March 5th, we should have three rows. Um, one at a value of 8 and 0, 2 and 9, 39 and 17, and it all looks correct. As I start to then uh, go in and click on the scrolling, go up to number 1. March 1st has all of our values, 14 and 3, um, three different ones. And as I scroll throughout my list, you can see March 2nd only had 2, March 3rd had 3, and March 4th only had 1, the APU, APPAU. Uh, a value of 52 and 0. So everything seems to be looking correct. Um, and so we're all set. Our scroll chart is there now and working. Once again, if I came over and I added any new data, um, let's say for March 8th, what I would want to do is just right click on my form control button, do format control, and instead of maximum value of 8, I would want to change this to a maximum value of 9. And that'll then pick up the next chart data that I've added at the bottom of my data table. Hopefully this has helped you create your own scrolling chart series uh, where you can use a scroll bar or other form controls um, to modify the data uh, that your chart is displaying using an offset formula and showing you how to connect all that up. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to my video channel so that you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.